Hey folks, we're going to be taking a quick look at an updated workflow for processing Wiggleograms. I'm going to show you how to use Lightroom or Darktable to export frames for a Wigglegram and then how to process them in a nonlinear editor like DaVinci Resolve. This workflow is much easier and less time consuming than using Photoshop to animate them. You know, I think Photoshop is first a photo manipulation application and like 37th an animation application. I was waiting to make this video for when I had friends to test the lens out on, but uh, that would have taken ages. So all of the samples shown in this video are from Mark Alhadef of sonyalphablog.com. I sent him an early version of the lens and he was kind enough to provide me with some great shots. His links are all in the bottom there. All right, so the photos are imported into Lightroom. Let's see which one we want to choose. Something that will give us um, something interesting, something that has foreground, midground, and background. That one might be good. Let's, um, let's start that. I think that one might be good too. I'll probably do these two and possibly this one. Um, yeah, so let's do that. I'm going to process uh, this one in Lightroom and then we'll do this one in Darktable and I guess I'll do this one here too. All right, so now that we have our photos selected, this next tip comes to you from Bliss Garcia. In my previous how-to, he said, why don't you just use virtual copies? And he's right, why don't I just use virtual copies? And what that does is it just creates a virtual copy that doesn't actually create another file on your computer. It's a virtual copy using the XML data of your adjustments. So we can select all of them and we wanna create two of these virtual copies for a total of three photos of that first photo there. All right, so with that, let's jump over to the develop module and the crop tool. We're gonna to go to a two, one or one, two aspect ratio. We're just gonna get that in portrait instead of landscape. Then we're gonna jump over to this frame and do the same thing, two, one, I wish there was an easier way to do this, but there isn't. And do the same thing for the last frame here. And then we're gonna look across each frame to look for um, variations in the exposure and in the tone. So this middle frame is well saturated, the contrast um, be a little better in the midtones, um, maybe in the shadows too. This one, tones are slightly off. What I'm going to do here is just slight adjustments. Uh, when we get into DaVinci Resolve, we can make some final adjustments to the uh, overall photo. That looks okay. So we're going to select these six and um, with those adjustments made, we're just going to export full size JPEGs. All right, so let's jump over to Darktable. Uh, same thing as in Lightroom, we need to make two duplicates. So in Darktable, their virtual copies are called duplicates. It's the same thing. There's no actual file created on the computer. Uh, it's just uh, editing XML data um, with all your settings. Let's do that one more time. And we're going to uh, go to dark, the Darkroom module or the Darkroom tab. Um, to edit these. So let's crop this. We're going to go to one and rotate that. And we're going to get the first frame. That looks right. So we're going to get the first frame. <laughs> Yeah. 
that's pretty close. So we're going to jump back to the light table module and we're going to scroll down to um, export. So it's uh, full size JPEGs. Um, we'll export those. And now that we have our frames, let's open up a new project in DaVinci Resolve. Let's call it um, program test. So there are a couple of things we need to do first, if you haven't done so already. First is we need to make sure we don't import still frames that were exported at roughly the same time as a sequence into Resolve. To do that, let's jump over to the Media tab. Then we're going to go to this Media Storage panel and click the three dots here. And we need to make sure that we check mark Show Individual Frames. So it's checked here. That's good. The second thing we need to do is to make sure that our imported stills are set to two frames. This is something that I found works best. When you play around with it, it may be different for you. But to do that, you go to Preferences, you click on the User tab, and then on the side here, go to Editing. And then you want to go to your General Settings, and you want your standard still durations set to two frames. Um, depending on whatever your project is, you can set it to seconds or frames. I find two is a very sweet spot for me. There's one last thing that we should do. It depends on how you want to export it, but this is typically how I set it up. Um, I set it for a 2-3 aspect ratio. So if we're doing uh, portrait style, I'm going to do 1080 for the um, width, and then I'm going to go 1620 for the height. We're going to save that. All right, so we're going to start with this one here. Since it was the first one we edited, we're going to select them all. Right click, create new timeline with them, and we'll call it uh, wiggle gram test 001 gram. All right, so now that our frames are in the timeline, I like to turn off snapping. You can click this magnet tool, or you can press N to turn it on or off. It, uh, it helps in organizing the uh, initial timeline because the frames are so small. Um, snapping kind of just throws it everywhere. So the way that I organize it is I stack them all on top of each other um, with this middle frame being the anchor frame. So this frame doesn't move uh, at all. These, This first frame and third frame, they move around in relation to this frame here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select them all and we're going to resize it to fit the window and probably something like that and bring that down a little get some headspace over her that looks good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the anchor frame and I'm gonna jump down to composite composite mode gets changed from normal to subtract and that gives us something like this so we're gonna reposition that first frame so that all the pixels between it and the anchor frame are subtracted so that we know that they are, in fact, aligned correctly. I think that's okay. So let's jump back to the anchor frame, turn that composite mode back to normal. And we're going to go on to the third frame. Composite mode gets changed to subtract. And this one will reposition. see if that works. Change it back to normal. And you want to make sure loop is turned on. Let's, uh, let's zoom out and preview that. That looks pretty good, though it is, um, it is clipping a little here. So what we're going to do is just increase the size there. We're just increase the zoom a little. And then we'll bring that position down. Okay. 
So things look okay. Uh, there is a little bit of flickering and we're gonna try to iron that out right now. So what's happening is this one looks slightly desaturated and lacks a little bit of contrast. So we're going to jump over to the colors tab. So that looks pretty good. What I'll usually do here is duplicate the frames on the timeline. Um, and this will be for three to six seconds, depending on if I want to use frame blending or optical flow. I find that six seconds is a good duration for a wiggle gram. And three seconds is good for frame blending and optical flow with a 50% reduction in the playback speed. You'll get six seconds and then you also get the optical flow in between the frames. So let's run that through. And I think at six seconds, that looks pretty good. You get that sense of dimensionality. I think with optical flow here, things would get a little, a little jumbled in the back. The, the transformation in between frames would kind of tear the, the, the entire wiggle gram. So I think we're okay with six seconds, no optical flow here. So now that we have that, we can jump over to the deliver tab. I usually change this to MP4. You know, it doesn't matter. It's personal preference here. You can do whatever you like. I don't, I don't really care. Um, whatever works for you. There's no audio. We'll add to the render queue and we'll render that out. So this is my updated workflow for processing wiggle grams using a non-linear editor like DaVinci Resolve. Uh, the workflow is so much quicker using this once you have your frames exported from whatever digital asset management or raw developer you're using, right? You can piece things together much more fluid and you can position each video track or each frame much more accurately than you could in Photoshop. So yeah, if you have any questions, comments below. Um, I'll try to get back to you. I know I'm pretty bad with that. You know, talking to people is um, pretty hard for me, but I'll try my best to get back to you. So yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.